Hello, and welcome back to the Loco Files. In today's episode, we're looking at the Stania Black Fives. The London, Midland and Scottish Railway Class 5 460, almost universally known as the Black Five, is a class of steam locomotive. It was introduced by Sir William Stania in 1934, and 842 examples were built between then and 1951. Members of the class survived to the final day of steam on British Railways in 1968, and 18 members have survived into preservation. This class was often a favourite amongst both drivers and enthusiasts, which still holds true to this day. The Black Fives were a mixed traffic locomotive, a do-anything, go-anywhere type, designed by Stania, who had previously been with the Great Western Railway. In his early LMS days, he designed his Stania Mogul, in which he experimented with the Great Western School of Thought on locomotive design, aka copy and paste. A number of details in this design he would never use again, realising the superiority of details not used on the Great Western. Stania realised there was a need for larger locomotives, these were to be the LMS versions of the Great Western Hall class, but not an exact copy, as the halls were too wide to run most places in Britain. They shared a similar cylinder arrangement, internal boiler design and size, and driving wheels with a diameter of 6 feet. In their early days, the locomotives were known as the Black Stanniers, due to their black livery. In contrast to Stanniers' other class of 460, the LMS Jubilees, which were painted in crimson, and known until April 1935 as the Red Stanniers. Later on, the nickname of the former became Black Five the number referring to the power classification given to the engines. This was originally 5P, 5F, but from 1940 onwards was shown on the cab side as a simple figure 5. There were a number of detail variations in the locomotives and they did not all remain in the same condition as built. Some locomotives built under British Railways administration were used as test beds for various design modifications with a view of incorporating the successful ones into the standard class of locomotives that were to be built from 1951 onwards. These modifications included outside Caprotti valve gear, roller bearings of both the Timkin and Skefco types, on the coupled and tender axles, in a variety of combinations, and an experimental steel firebox was fitted also. Other locomotives had modified drafting to self-clean the smoke box, thereby reducing turnaround and disposal times, and eliminating one of the most unpopular jobs on the railways. Numbering started from 5,000, with the first 20 being ordered from Crew Works in April 1934. A further 50 locomotives were ordered from the Vulcan Foundry in 1933. The first of the Vulcan Foundry engines entered service in 1934 and the entire order of 50 was delivered before the first crew-built engine number 5000 was completed in February 1935. 
The first 57 locomotives were built with domeless boilers, with straight throat plates and a low degree of superheating, 14 elements in two rows. The boilers of the remaining 13 members, 5007 to 5019, were provided with a three row version, which had 21 elements and had a greater total surface area, as well as giving less obstruction to the gas flow. The original 57 boilers were converted later to a higher degree of superheating, which had 24 elements, and were fitted with a dome. Further orders were placed with crew five, from 5070 to 5074, Vulcan Foundry 5075 to 5124, and Armstrong Whitworth 5125 to 5225, for a total of 155 locomotives, which were also built with domeless boilers and straight throat plates with a 21 element superheater. All these boilers, including the earlier converted ones, with a dome were fitted indiscriminately to any of the first 225 engines, which could appear at various times with a domed or domeless boiler. However, many of the early frames were converted to accept sloping throat plate boilers. This modification was carried out to provide a stock of spare boilers for the early engines which would minimise the time spent in the works by engines awaiting a fresh boiler. All locomotives from number 5225 were fitted when new with the sloping throat plate boiler. All extra boilers made had the sloping throat plate arrangement and only one example of a later engine having been fitted with a straight throat plate boiler is known, which was number 45433. Several different patterns of boiler were used on the locomotives, running into double figures. The throat plate design was the most significant, but there were also a different number of superheater flues, fire grate arrangements, stay material, dome and water feed arrangements as well as washout plug placements in various combinations. A further 227 were ordered from Armstrong Whitworth in 1936, the largest single locomotive order ever given by a British railway to an outside contractor. Crew built a further 20 which had a higher degree of superheating in the boilers, which had 28 elements, whereas the Whitworth ones had 24 elements. Number 5471, built at Crewe in 1938, would be the last built for five years. During the early stages of the Second World War, the priority was for heavy freight locomotives, and the closely related ATFs were produced in large numbers. In 1943, construction was restarted, with Derby Works building its first member. Construction continued up to number 5499, as the numbering block from 5500 was allocated to the Patriot class. A further batch of 200 locomotives were numbered from 4800 to 4999, which was followed by a batch numbering from 4658 to 4799. By this time the LMS had been nationalised and British Railways added 40,000 to all the numbers. Eventually, the 842 examples would number from 44658 to 45499. 
From early 1947 onwards, engines were built with the top feed on the front ring of the boiler from number 4998 and numbers 44758 through to 767 had a longer wheelbase which was increased by 4 inches with the change in the coupled wheelbase of 3 inches. This was necessary in order to accommodate the Timken roller bearing housings without fouling the ash pan. In 1948, George Ivert introduced more modifications to the bearings and the valve gear. Other experimental Ivert features include the use of steel rather than copper fireboxes on certain engines and the fitting of double blast pipes and chimneys in some instances. 44738 to 757 were built with Caprotti valve gear. And the last two numbers, 44686 and 687, built at Horwich in 1951, were fitted with a new arrangement of Caprotti valve gear which was later used on some of the BR Standard Class 5s and the BR Class 8 Pacific Duke of Gloucester. We will now take a look at the accidents and incidents involving members of the class. On the 13th of October 1939, locomotive number 5025 was hauling an express passenger service from Houston to Stranra, when it was in a collision with an LMWR G1 number 9169, which was attaching a van to the rear of an Inverness bound train at Bletchley in Buckinghamshire, severely damaging it. Five people were killed and more than 30 were injured. In 1941, locomotive number 5425 was severely damaged in a Luftwaffe air raid. It was subsequently repaired at Crew Works. On the 1st of January 1946, the Litchfield rail crash in which locomotive number 5495 was holding a freight train that was derailed at Litchfield Trent Valley Station in Staffordshire due to faulty points. The train collided with a passenger service, killing 20 people and injuring a further 21. On the 16th of January, a locomotive of the class was holding a passenger service that collided with a light engine that was standing foul of the main line at Preston due to a signalman's error. Both trains were derailed and 13 people were injured. On the 23rd of January 1955, locomotive number 45274 was hauling an express passenger service that was derailed due to excessive speed on a curve in the Sutton Coalfield rail crash. 19 people were killed and 64 were injured. On the 2nd of October 2015, locomotive number 45231 was working a private charter for the West Coast Railway Company through Doncaster when it was noticed that its TPWS equipment had been isolated by the footplate crew. Isolation of the TPWS system had been a factor in the Wooten Bassett Spad incident in March of the same year, involving unrebuilt Light Pacific 34067 Tangmere. As a result, the West Coast Railway Company was suspended from operating on the national network by the ORR. Only five Black Fives received names during their mainline working lives, a tiny percentage of the total produced. However, Seven more have been named in preservation. All of those named in mainline service 
were named after Scottish regiments. Number 45401 was the first Black Five to be withdrawn from stock in 1961 following a collision at Warrington. Although the boiler was reused and lasted to the end of steam on BR. The remainder of the class were withdrawn between 1962 and 1968, with some members of the class surviving to the last day of steam on BR in August 1968. 18 Black Fives have been preserved, with 12 of them being purchased directly from BR for preservation. The remaining six being rescued from Barry Scrapyard. One of each of the builders batch has survived into preservation, with seven LMS built engines and eleven built by outside contractors. Of the eighteen to be preserved, fourteen have operated in preservation. The members that have yet to run are 44901, 45163, 45293, 45491, and that's that. Twelve Black Fives have also operated on the main line in preservation. These are numbers 44767, 44871, 44932, 45,000 45025 45110 45212 45231 45305 45337 45407 and 45428 Of these Numbers 44871, 45212, 45231, and 45407 have mainline certificates. With number 45212 going out on Friday, the 3rd of March 2017, for its light and loaded testing runs. 44871 returned to the mainline following an overhaul at Ian Riley's new workshop in August 2017. 45305 was a regular mainline runner, but is currently out of service undergoing boiler repairs, and will return to mainline service once it is running again. 45428 has just returned to service following an overhaul, and is to be recertified for mainline use between Robont and Whitby, with the occasional visits to Battersby, and 44806 is to be mainline certified for the same duties following her next overhaul. And there we have it. Thank you for watching and listening. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like, uh, feel free to drop a comment down below and if you really enjoyed it and want to see what appears next in the series feel free to subscribe once again a special thank you to tom dibden of dark dj productions for editing the videos for this series thank you and goodbye